Hi, I'm Matthew Swarthout, the Marine Museum intern for this year. And I wanted to take you around the basement of the Marine Museum because a lot has changed. So we're going to start over here on this wall. You can see a few boat models, and then this also tells you an overview of what's happening at the museum. We've got an overview of the Nico, some information on the Carl D. Bradley, and the life ring from the Oswald Boyd. So now I'm going to take you around my exhibit that I did this year. It's about the Carl D. Bradley, which was the largest shipwreck on Lake Michigan. So come check it out. I spent the last semester in New York City where I went to a lot of different museums where I got my inspiration for this. I went to the 9-11 Museum where they had a really powerful story where they told it in these kind of headlines. So I wanted to do the same for this. So if you follow the exhibit, you'll see a lot of different headlines like Queen of the Lakes or Showing Her Where. And that kind of goes along and it tells you kind of chapters like in a book. So to start off, we start off with Queen of the Lakes. The Carl D. Bradley held the title the Queen of the Lakes for 22 years, which meant that it was the longest vessel on Lake Michigan, which was a pretty big deal. Other boats that held this title were the Edmunds Fitzgerald and then currently the MV Paul R. Tregurtha. As you can see here, there's a couple more historical pictures, which I had a lot of fun finding online and from other various sources. Um, there's a couple great ones like this one showing how low in the water it is with how, uh, how much cargo it was holding. The next chapter in our book it moves on to showing her where, where it tells about how uh, leading up to this uh, wreckage there were a lot of different events that contributed to it. For the boat getting really worn and uh, damaged then when it was hit by this massive storm what ultimately caused it to sink. Moving on, a turn for the worse. So this is really interesting because this shipwreck could have been avoided, I know it could have been avoided many different ways, but their original plan was to move from Gary, Indiana to Manitowoc, Wisconsin. But when they were about an hour away from the shore, they turned away from Manitowoc, Wisconsin, heading over to Roger City, Michigan. But they didn't make it here. They sank here 12 miles off Beaver Island. So that was the turn for the worst heading towards Roger City. And as you make the turn around the museum, then you can see what's happening here. This is one of the largest storms on Lake Michigan. So the Carl D. Bradley wasn't hit with just a normal storm. There were many different severe weather events that all converged upon northern Lake Michigan at the same time, causing 40-foot waves and 55-mile-an-hour gusts of wind to take on this boat. The vessel was ultimately overwhelmed, as you can see here in this title, and it was snapped in two because of the amazing amount of stress that was on the boat and the age of the boat. So this will tell you about the 15 hours it took Frank Mays and Elmer Fleming, the only two survivors of the 35-man crew, to survive through the blistering winds and freezing cold temperatures of that night. So it moves along, tells you about the different newspaper articles and um, a few more great pictures of the Bradley. Now this is where it kind of ties into Beaver Island. It talks about the lifeboat which we have behind you. It talks about how it ended up here and um, just kind of the story of the lifeboat that was never actually used um, during the wreck. Because this lifeboat was towards the back of the boat when the men were towards the front, and as it split in two, they had no way of getting to it. This will tell you about the last thing is time to settle the score. So what was really interesting about this is that there were many conflicting viewpoints of the U.S. Steel Corporation who owned the boat and Elmer Fleming and Frank Mays who had their other idea of what happened. So there was a lot of arguing and lawsuits to figure out what actually happened. But after a couple dives down to the Bradley, um, Frank Mays and Elmer Fleming were vindicated that the Carl D. Bradley did split in two um, so that they were awarded their, uh, their lawsuits. Last, we have a dedication uh, to the brave men on the Carl D. Bradley's final voyage where you can find all the names of the 35-man crew. Um, and then here we have an interview with Frank Mays um, about his story about what happened on that night, um, if we make it till daylight, which was filmed right here in the Marine Museum in 2018. So, if you haven't been to the Marine Museum lately, you really haven't been. There's so many great things here, and I'm really excited for you to come on down. Thanks so much.